How is it going guys? It's Epsilon here and today's RuneScape video looks at not only something that will make you GP and quite a lot of it, but also uh, it will get you up levels in both Slayer and Dungeoneering and will farm you Dungeoneering tokens. And it's one of the best methods I've been using in Fresh Start Worlds to be able to train up my Slayer level and also get my Dungeoneering and Dungeoneering tokens, which have allowed me to get things like the Charming Imp, which have allowed me to get things uh, like the Bone Crusher and all of the upgrades that come with Dungeoneering that aren't related to the actual level. So the shop, the Dungeoneering token shop, and this is one of the nicest farming methods that you can use and you don't need anyone else to be able to do it. So without further ado, let's have a look. So first things first, what will you need if you are going to do this um, to maximise what you're going to be able to output from it? And effectively, what you'll be wanting to do is get yourself all of the high combat level stats. Obviously, uh, for this one, if you have uh, combat stats in magic or range, it is ideal because that is what you're going to be wanting to use as it doesn't involve you getting up close and personal with some mobs that can definitely hit you super hard. So that's what I'd recommend get yourself up to probably 80 plus in a combat style because without it you're not really going to be able to at least perform at the highest level and I would highly recommend you also have 80 defense. It isn't a necessary 100% uh, requirement that you have to have these levels but it will make it a damn sight easier for you to be able to do it and to actually come out with the victory <laughs> or at least the assumed victory of coming out with good XP rates and stuff like that. So apart from the actual level requirements, what do you actually need in terms of gear? Well, it uh, on the account that we're playing, it's Fresh Start Worlds. But... If you do actually want to be able to do this pretty well, you're going to need at least tier 70 gear. Plus, if you're playing on Fresh Start Worlds right now, then you're going to be wanting 80 uh, stat gear because obviously you just need the defense bonus that that provides you to be able to kind of get away with uh, doing certain things and also the accuracy bonus that you're going to get from the weapon and therefore having either attack at 80 or major 80 or ranger 80 will just allow you to use your weapon and it will make it a darn sight easier for you so obviously not only are you going to be wanting the armor and also your weapon but i would highly recommend now if you haven't already going out and getting yourself an amulet or a ring slot that is going to provide the class bonuses because that's going to enable you to actually be able to deal more damage more dps and therefore get through this a lot easier and also anything that boosts your accuracy on top of the accuracy boost that we already have in fresh start worlds it's going to make it a ton easier as well so it's fantastic right now. Obviously, one of the key things that I want to highlight as well is that if you do have the cape, I highly recommend going to the mage arena to be able to get the mage cape or doing some other event that's going to allow you to be able to get uh, your bonuses from your cape slot as well. Obviously, if you've already got a 99 in something, then wear that. It's going to be absolutely fine. But it's not necessary, and I actually, at this point, was only doing it uh, using a Spellstorm cape, which is, like, terrible. It's basically no point in even using it, but there you go. Anyway, what do you do actually do? Because we've been going through the gear. We've gone through the stats that you're probably going to need. Um, how do you actually do it? Well, the first thing that you're going to want to do is you will want to set up a group. Now... That's only literally for the teleport there. You don't need to actually set up a group yourself. All you do is you go to the group interface icon. If you go into the kind of community tab or whatever you want to call it, go to the grouping system. And then what you can do is go to the Zamorakian Undercity. Make sure that you've got that selected. Then go down to the create a new group icon. Click that. And then what you can do is then creates a group. Then you update your group to the Zamorakan Undercity actual area, update it, ready up, and then you can uh, then teleport to the area by just following the prompts. Make sure that you do click the teleport. And then as soon as you've done that, you can leave your group because there's absolutely no reason you need to be in a group at this point other than to just teleport there and make it easier for you guys to get there without having to travel all the way there. 
Now, once you arrive at the Zamorak in Undercity, if you're wanting to bank, which I will show you right now, you can actually travel over to the bank area on the minimap if you don't know already. But effectively, it's just down from the area. It's just south and you can actually pick up the bank slot or the bank chest. And this is where I usually re restock myself with food or uh, any potions that I may be kind of suffering with or I don't have any more of. And you can just fill up your inventory and then jobs are good and you've actually completed it absolutely fine. And that is what this uh, kind of nice uh, bank slot is about. And of course you can use that continuously throughout this method. It's super easy to get there. If you have another way of getting there that's somewhat faster, I have no idea how that would be. Um, but yeah, other than that, what you can then do is you can then move down into the Zamorak in Undercity. So the actual mode that you want to pick is just the normal mode. Once you've clicked that, it will spawn you down there. Sometimes the loading screen gets stuck. Just hit the escape button and it should kind of uh, re-emerge with your actual thing going on. And then what you can do from here is move down. Now there is a specific strategy to doing this on your own. Usually if you are the level that I am, so if you're around this level or maybe you're not that experienced at PVM, then you want to be taking on certain of the these uh, dark wizards there's four of them they will aggro you when you're trying to get to the place that we actually want to so whatever happens you have to take them all out so what I typically do is just aggro them one at one on one so what you can do come to this area here on screen then just move forward and then attack this nearest dark wizard you can then kind of move into this area and then you can continually dps them down make sure that you do put protect magic on because they are mages and so they're going to be dealing quite decent amounts of magic damage to you and then once they're out take out this wizard here the one on the opposite side you could do either way it doesn't really matter but as long as you take one of them out it's going to be absolutely fine so when you're DPSing them down, you'll see that you're getting actual uh, loot from this. Now, each of these can actually provide you with some pretty decent GP, and that's what I'm on about with the, how you can make a ton of GP from this, especially in Fresh Start Worlds, as this is probably more beneficial for you guys. Um, then once you've taken out this one, you can then move on to the Dark Wizard over here. And then once he's out, uh, you can then just move on. Make sure that you do bring your Cornucopia and then you can just heal up. And then what you can do is move all the way down here because they're all taken out and they're not going to be uh, kind of stomping you at the same time. And then there is always this Wandering Mage. It's a Chaos Witch um, or something in that region. Um, but yeah, you can just take him out as well once they're out of the game then it is just a purely AFK Slayer task effectively because what you do need is um, you can just move down over here and then you can attack the Cerberus Juvenile. Now, remember, you don't actually have to be in uh, kind of Slayer uh, gear or at least um, you don't have to be on task either. It will help you if you do have any of the auras that are going to boost um, the ability for you to deal damage. Um, using your Slayer task. Obviously, they're not currently available on Fresh Start World, so you can't use them. Um, but if you have any perks from Invention, if you've managed to get there already, then yes, you can use Invention perks and anything that is going to boost up your DPS against the Cerberus Juvenile. One thing that I want to highlight real quick is that if you don't actually stay outside the doorway, you will be taking massive damage. Now, the problem with standing outside of the doorway against the Cerberus Juvenile is that you'll be dealing less damage to it. So you can see here, as soon as we step inside of the doorway, we're going to be taking three massive hits. And you can see there, we lost a ton of hit points, nearly 4,000. So you definitely don't want to be taking any uh, kind of unnecessary hits. So just stay outside of the doorway on the left-hand side as you're looking at it like this. And then you can just use your DPS. I highly recommend you bring some magic potions or super ranging or super attack potions. Um, I, to be honest with you, I wouldn't ever melee this because uh, that's just too risky with it actually being pulled in. Um, but yeah, it's um, really now AFK and you can just uh, wait for your character to rev it down. That's what I've been doing just to get some easy Slayer experience. Obviously, you have to be on task with Hellhounds because this counts as a Hellhound 
in the game. So yeah, you can literally just sit here against the juvenile and DPS him down. Obviously, if you want to improve your chances of being able to um, get some hits or you want to increase it, make sure that you do pray the right thing. Don't sit there with protect magic when you don't actually need it. Um, obviously this is just basically dpsing him down it takes a while because outside of the uh, kind of melee range of the cerberus you are at a disadvantage you're going to be uh, dealing less damage um, so it does take a while uh, but that's kind of the cost of just being completely afk and not having to do anything and all you have to do is make sure that your account doesn't log in between when you're taking this thing down um, but ultimately that is all you have to do i'll join you back once this cerberus has been taken out or is very very low so we're pretty much there and there you go the cerberus has been taken down we managed to get just a chaos relic uncommon so that's 25,000 gp and a large blunt root salvage but of course one of the key things that you do get is 5,000 dungeoneering tokens and that's not the only thing you can get from this boss you can actually get a ton of gp from the drops uh, should link one on screen right now where you'll be able to see something a little bit better that you can get I think you can get up to 54 uh, large blunt rune salvages which go for about 32,000 if you high out them and so yeah you can earn even more uh, and millions of GP in just one singular drop so it's really really good and it's alkable as well so you can basically um, guarantee that that's how much you're going to be able to get so it's really really good in that regard uh, one thing that you can see us doing here is actually going after the hellhounds now one thing that this grants you is just the ability to uh, if you're on slayer task speed it up a little bit because you probably don't want to be doing 150 of these bosses yes it's definitely possible um, but it will take you an absolute long time because you can probably only go through about 10 of these bosses every single time um, but with the killing these hellhounds as well you're going to guarantee yourself a little bit of extra money every single run and it's super easy to do and so I'd highly recommend you do do that then what you can do is much like we did at the beginning you can just kind of target each of these mages on their own and all you have to do get the hellhounds first uh, sometimes you will aggro the whole group if the hellhounds spot you and you go too far forward so you want to just uh, hold back a little bit and you can see here we pick up some super magic potions which is what i've been uh, using to be able to get some really easy uh, kind of levels um or easy kind of improvements to my mage level um, and we've basically got that so when I do some other slayer or higher tier PVM then we're going to be able to do that uh, really really easily and I highly recommend you guys do that um, of course remember still use your cornucopia and you're going to be doing absolutely fine we'll show you the loot drops in a second um, but I want to show you the war priestess of chaos because uh, you can really easily cheese this kind of uh, character in just a second uh, we'll just run the um what you want to do is obviously uh you want to be running melee or at least protect from melee and then you can kind of uh you'll be absolutely fine remember if you've got the boon of regeneration you'll be regening your prayer points so if you ever run low or you're running low on hit points but you aren't actually in combat then just literally wait a second uh, until you've got enough health and then you can just pop pop it on and then you can just uh, aggro the war priestess what you want to do is just run away and then activate your abilities whilst you're running away because um, this does not actually it doesn't have the range ability to actually deal any damage to you so all you have to do is literally just walk it uh, to the doorway and as you're going just dealing some damage to it obviously don't use long abilities like um, uh, suffocate there um, so what we can just do is continually go world magic is really really good and then what you can do is as soon as you go this way you can then go the other way and then surge through him um, or you can uh, kind of barge into him and then just run uh, it's up to you uh, but of course you will be taking damage if you do decide to barge and then we can just finish him off at the end yes we'll take one hit but it's not too bad and for killing him we literally get 150,000 um, or at least off of the price that you can get in the chest but that will be about 100,000 in reality and you can see here after only like five or well four different runs I think maybe even less like three runs we managed to pick up two 2.9 million um, so it's really really easy you can do about 10 runs an hour if you are higher level if you're around the level that I am at you're probably at about eight levels um, 
or eight runs per hour even and that will give you a decent chunk of xp and remember that every single uh, kind of mob that you take out so including that uh, war priestess there that will give you dungeoneering experience and i've managed to go from like 20 dungeoneering all the way up to 43 in not very long a couple of hours maybe uh, of doing this and i've earned a ton of money we've probably gained about 10 million from this after a few hours so you're probably looking at about three to four million uh, dependent on your drop luck and if you get a double um, um, kind of drop of the massive bunch of large blade, blunt rune salvage then you can get up to 54 of them and when they're th 30 thousand each you can get up to like one and a half million in a drop and they're not like that rare i've had it a few times so yeah it's a really really great way of being able to do it um and as far as kind of farming this all you have to do is just leave uh, alternatively you don't have to kill any of the mobs and if you're only after the dungeoneering tokens just take out the hellhound and leave um, but yeah once you're out here all you have to do click on it then would you like to continue where you left off just click no start the story mode again and you'll be dropped back down uh, in here and then just rinse and repeat the actual thing here hopefully this has given you a good indication as to how you can get some slayer levels if you are on task for hellhounds or alternatively just how to farm a ton of dungeoneering experience and also uh, dungeoneering tokens and earn some really really good money comparatively to some of the other methods in fresh start world don't forget if you're not already subscribed please do as it massively helps out the channel and if you want to see any more content like this with money making guides slayer guides uh, loads of different creatures 1 to 99s uh, then stay tuned on the channel and you should see those coming very very soon Thank you very much, and I hope I'll join you in one of those videos. Goodbye.